scoring and assists. Pretty good backcourt with him, Salas, and Hildreth. He's so fast with the ball. You saw it right there going up against another fast player in Marcus Burden. One of two, seven nothing weight. Another important player for Notre Dame is going to be Tate Davis. He was excellent against Georgia Tech. That defensive play he made at the end with that deflection and steal, that saved the game. Burton spins off the glass, no good, and then gets it back. Shot clock did not reset. It didn't hit the rim. Shrewsbury misses the three. What great hustle by Davis to keep it alive, and Notre Dame still got the ball. The Irish, the five players they have on the floor right now, not one of them played a minute for this team last year. The roster is comprised almost entirely of freshmen and transfers. The one exception really would be Matt Zona, who played 140 minutes last year for Notre Dame. Booth short on the three. Boy, give Notre Dame credit. They are battling on the offensive glass, and Tay Davis lays it in. Well, Tay Davis gets almost two offensive rebounds per game and averages over five per game. From um, Indianapolis, a transfer from Seton Hall. The cut by Carr, and it'll go. Boy, just a quick little drop step to get to that left shoulder. Now, that was a quick, strong move. Three minutes in, wake by seven. Well, Cam Heldrick looks locked in defensively. Burton draws a crowd, and a foul is called that will send Davis to the line. Well, Andrew Carr, a senior from Pennsylvania, started his career at Delaware. Just a really quick move to that left shoulder. His footwork is really good, and he's hit 34 threes on the season. Tay Davis at the line, double figures in six consecutive games for Notre Dame. Averaging almost 13 points per game in that stretch. And again, Notre Dame played, or is playing, its best basketball right now. They've won six out of nine, beat Virginia Tech, beat Wake Forest, beat Clemson. This is not a team to be taken lightly. Notre Dame, they're not necessarily a pack line defensive team, but they do pack it in. And this Wake Forest team is tough to pack it in on because they've got so many good shooters. Loose ball bounced right into the hands of Andrew Carr, who flushed it. Well, he's got great length, doesn't he? Pretty nice combo up front. Carr and Reed, very different kinds of players, but they complement each other well. And you've got Carr that's able to stretch the floor, and then Reed has that size and rebounding ability to finish around the basket. We walk. And a couple of guys with whistles agreed with you. First sub of the game is coming for Wake Forest right now. Matthew Marsh, a 7-1 junior from Cornwall, England, will take the place of Efton Reed. Marsh not getting as many minutes this year because of the arrival of Reed, who was granted a second-time transfer back in December and shortly thereafter moved into the starting lineup. Marsh not an outside shooter at all. He knows exactly what he is and very efficient around the rim. Good recovery by Davis on Salas. Salas creates a little space, left it short, but draws the foul. Pretty good start here for Wake Forest and a huge game for them. Up eight on the Irish in the early going. Double games there. Joe Lenardi has them in the first four out. And Steve Forbes just, I mean, you can't let it consume you. But this is a, a team that wound up on the wrong side of the bubble last year. They want to make this easy on everybody by winning at least a couple of games here in this tournament. But even if they win this one, they got to play Pitt tomorrow. Well, you mentioned they've beaten Duke, beat Clemson, but they also beat Pitt, split with them. They beat yeah. Virginia, and they had an early season win against Florida. So those are other quality wins they can rely upon, but... You're right. You don't want to leave it to the committee if you can settle it on the floor here. 
I would imagine there's nothing longer than being a bubble team getting knocked out of your conference tournament on a Wednesday or a Thursday. And Sunday must feel like it's years away when you're in that kind of a situation. As Burton is fouled by Carr, that's going to be a, a tough switch out for a big guy to try to stay in front of Burton. Well, you don't have to ha put your hands on him. Carr just put both hands out. And once you have two hands on the ball handler, that's an easy automatic call for the official. But Carr, you see, their both hands come out, easy call, even though the contact was minimal. You know, if you, you can have almost violent body contact there, but you put your hands on, they're going to call that right away. Julia Roper, the second, has checked in for the Irish, a transfer from Northwestern. Burton behind the back, picks up the dribble. Here's Roper. Burton launches and hits a deep three. He is just fearless at 31 points in the game against Wake Forest in South Bend. He is from Mishawaka, Indiana, just down the street from South Bend. But they couldn't make up their minds. Milwaukee or Indiana, <laughs> what are they going to do? Salas is wide open and hits another one. And boy, is he playing with a lot of confidence. In two games against Duke, Hunter Salas averaged 25 points. He was 21 of 33 in those two games. Here's Shrewsbury. He does not need much time or space, but missed that one. Well, Cam Hildreth did a great job of trailing him, and he was almost behind him, reaching up over the top. Really bothered Braden Shrewsbury with that shot. Carr. Tipped up by Marsh. Won't go. Notre Dame ball. That is a really good freshman backcourt for Notre Dame with Burton and Shrewsbury. And Shrewsbury does such a great job of moving without the ball. He must run six miles in a game. Got to go up right away. Yeah, but Jai can't get the shot off yet. He turned it over. And he changed his pivot foot. It's a great job by Carr to wall up and stay big. You watch Hunter Salas. Just, you get caught in no man's land, then trying to switch out. They X'd. And Roper just couldn't get there. Just good ball movement. And who's had more success in the transfer portal the last three years than Steve Forbes? Alonis Williams, player of the year. A couple of years ago, Tyree Appleby, first team all league. Hunter Salas, first team all league. Like Indiana Jones in the last crusade. He chose wise. <laughs> and Efton Reed and Boopy Miller are also transfers. And got a foul going against Wake. Notre Dame does a very good job defensively of getting a hand down low in the passing lane for those little pocket passes. They do it very well in pick and roll defense. And they did it very well there to get that deflection and steal. Parker Fredrickson, a freshman from Bixby, Oklahoma, number 20 in white, into the game for Wake. He can shoot it. Roper into the paint, can't get the shot off. Now he will. And hits the three. Hunter Salas helped off. And once the pass came out, that's it's tough to recover there when the ball comes out ball side. Miller steps in, pulls up at the elbow and knocks it down. Well done. Bobby Miller didn't play a lot last season, but he's all freshman, all Mac freshman team at Central Michigan. Had an injury that limited him only to four games last year. But he's had a really nice year for Steve Forbes. Burton the kick. And the corner three around and out for Matt Zona. Zona had some really good minutes yesterday against Georgia Tech. Wound up with seven points, but made some really positive plays in the game when he was in there. And again, of the returning players, he has by far the most minutes. It's almost a brand new team. Whoa. Salas off the back of the rim, I believe. He certainly got it up and over the rim, but couldn't finish it. He measured that one, just waltzed down the lane with that hesitation move. Burton misses the three. And Reed clearing out traffic for another rebound. Yeah, Salas had that ball in his hands, and Reed's like, come on, man, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> I'm not taking your assist away. Don't mess with my rebounds. You guards are so cute. Now leave me alone. Let me, do, <laughs> let me do my job down here. Salas from the wing. And look at that. Four Notre Dame players. Carr comes out with it. 
And Salas converts. And what a great play by Andrew Carr. First the rebound where he just used his length. And then when he was trying to save it, really good job by Hunter. Thank you. Uh, the, obviously, the kids have been involved as well. When Janetta suffered the stroke, Steve was in Kuwait. Operation Hardwood, this is back on August the 8th. He was literally half a world away. And it took a little while for the kids to notify, to be able to get to him and notify him. And obviously, it took a while for him to come back. And uh, just so wonderful again to see Janetta here and to see the whole family together here with the ACC tournament. Well, Steve, for you're not going to find a better guy. He's just a, got a huge heart. Boopy Miller, coast to coast. A really good job defensively by Wake Forest, especially Zach Keller jumping in front, getting that steal and starting the break. And Wake Forest has just imposed their will on both ends. Watch, watch Zach Keller right in the middle of the lane in help side defense. And that started the break of Boopy Miller right down Main Street all the way to the 10. And the lead grows for Wake up 14, eight and a half minutes in. You, know, you expect Wake Forest to put points on the board, but the defense has been impressive. I mean, Cam Hildreth has done a really nice job on Braden Shrewsbury. Active in switches to take things away. They're switching up to get into Notre Dame. J.R. Kinesny with the ball into the game for the Irish. And he'll pick up an assist on Kerry Booth's three. And Kerry Booth had a couple of big buckets in the game against Georgia Tech. He had 15 points against Wake Forest earlier this year. Keep in mind, and we've mentioned it a couple of times, Jess mentioned it, Jay mentioned it, Notre Dame beat Wake Forest just a couple of weeks ago. That was in South Bend. Beat him 70 to 65. A good cut by Keller, and he'll be rewarded with a trip to the line. Notre Dame doubled the post, and as soon as the double came over, Keller just dove to the basket. Right from the top, down the middle of the lane, made himself available. So watch the double team comes over. It was Booth coming off of Keller. Keller just cut right to the basket, and that means that Braden Shrewsbury's got to come over from the weak side to try to stop him, and that's not a fair fight physically. And an air ball in the first free throw for Keller, who was a starter near the beginning of the season. His minutes have declined once Efton Reed became eligible and joined the team. Keller, a sophomore from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Efton Reed had to sit out. I can't remember the number of games just because of that two-time transfer issue yeah. finally got settled. And I don't know why it was such a problem, but once he got back in there, he's a real presence. Burton with a backdoor cut, kicks it back out. And another three for Booth. Well, concentrating so much on Burton that that left has left Kerry Booth open two plays in a row, and he's buried both of them. Maybe that'll open some things up for Notre Dame. A 29% three-point shooter. He has knocked down a couple already today. A clear out, one-on-one. -on -one. Reed and Jai. Reed wins. Now, once you get a back down and get into basically the restricted arc, there was no reason even to pivot there. Just go straight up. But a good move by Efton Reed. Started his career at LSU, went to Gonzaga. Now Wake. Seven foot, 250. He's all of that. Jai. Ooh. That was an elbow. <laughs> he took one oh. right to the chops. And Keller gets called for the foul, and the Wake bench explodes and said, yeah, he took an elbow to the face. And will the officials have a look at it? Or and what the official said was uh, Zach Keller didn't give him the opportunity to come down. Yeah. And it was clearly a foul. That's not yeah. a problem. So Salas at the line for Wake. 80% free throw shooter. 11 points already. Averaged better than 18 a game this year. Buries them both. And these were the right calls. It's just, boy, it takes so long yeah. to get there. Yeah. How many times you got to look at it before you figure it out? So, common foul. You can see the right leg of Keller, and he clearly didn't let yeah. him land. No, he so, fouled yeah. him. Yeah, yeah there's, there's no no argument about any of these calls. Yeah. But I'd like to see it three more times, have you look at it, and have our director <laughs> and our producer look at it, and then we can talk about it.
So the common foul on Keller did not come with free throws. So now it's Wake Ball up by 13. Good thing we got an extra day with Leap Year. That helped out. <laughs> Hildreth in to Reed. Quick double. And a turnover. And that didn't need to be that quick of a pass out. If you got something great, but if not, just dribble out of it. And dribble out of it toward the sideline. And then find an open teammate. But that double came really quickly and aggressively. Logan Imes is in the game, a freshman from Zionsville, Indiana. That's him with the ball. Zionsville, Indiana is right outside of Indianapolis. Boy, Boots made a couple. He was looking for another one there, but now Boopy Miller is flying down the court, but Booth got a piece of it. And guess who got another loose ball under the rim? But Carr turns it over this time. A lot of arms to throw, throw through. That's the second time the Carr's been trapped down there. Burton, quick crossover. Nice kick. Booth again. Kinesny the rebound. Burton guarded by Salas. And out of bounds still belongs to the Irish. When you're scouting report, you know, you say stay down and then stay in front of Marcus Burton. Okay, great. All right, stay in front of him. That's it. I just have to stay in front of him. Right. <laughs> Simple, really. <laughs> and you could say the same thing about guarding Boopy Miller. That'd be a. Yeah, exactly. I, I'd like to see the two of them take a basketball and go end to end and see who's faster. You go in any scouting report in America and you think it's going to be a shutout. Burton gets the bounce. Irish within 11. He is a shot maker, yeah. isn't he? Every level he can score. Miller back to Salas. Reed misses the three. And out of bounds back to Notre Dame. Reed seven for 27 now on the season shooting the three. He's gonna he's gonna take a rest, D Forbes. That's that might be one where you look at your big guy and say, You're wide open. And there's a reason you are wide open. You sound like you speak from experience there. I was never told. Oh. Kevajai guarded by Marsh. Booth baseline driving this time, and he is fouled. Harry Booth has been aggressive so far. The freshman from Englewood, Colorado, averages about six points, four rebounds per game. I heard Tom Crean in the studio compare Harry Booth to sort of a young Noah Clowney. He's not quite there yet. Noah Clowney was a little bit more advanced, but you can see the comparison with the length and the ability to shoot it, the athleticism. Scored 15 in the win over Wake a couple of weeks ago. Had a 13 rebound game this year as well. That came at Boston College. So he's got a variety of skills. And again, another freshman. We've talked a lot about the two guys in the backcourt, but there's a really nice larger batch of freshmen that Micah Shrewsbury is hoping to grow with here. That's yeah, kind of an old school approach. Carr is fouled on his way to the goal. Attempts 13 of those have been from three-point range So Wake Forest defense has protected the basket protected the paint very effectively to start this game At the line Andrew Carr the 6'11 senior from Westchester, Pennsylvania had a really nice game in the win over Clemson On Saturday six for seven from the floor knocked down a couple of threes scored 17 points started his career at Delaware in Newark, Delaware where Mike Bray started his mm -hmm. coaching career. You know the nickname of the Delaware team? Uh, would they be the Blue Hens? The Blue Hens. Yeah, the two for two today, man. But kicking chickens. Mike Bray, of course, coaching Notre Dame to an ACC, ACC tournament championship. That was what, 2015, 2015. I believe, right in Greensboro? At Pat Connaughton, Jaron Grant, and others, just a great Notre Dame team. Boy, they had a, a couple of great years on the move. Yeah, that 2015 Notre Dame team was just magnificent. Salas got his man in the air, but it missed the corner three, and here's Burton playing with two fouls. 
Shrewsbury. Yes. Oh, that was almost a logo three. A great find by Marcus Burton. And Braden Shrewsbury's had a tough time finding openings in the half court. Cam Hildreth did a really good job on him early on. Maybe that'll take the lid off a little bit. And Notre Dame kind of hanging around right now. They are down eight. Biggest lead Wake has had. They got into double digits for several minutes, and now they turn it over. Biggest lead Wake has had was 14. Notre Dame's got it down to eight. Well, in transition, he just lined that thing up. He's got a low release, but he gets it off really quickly. As does Parker Fredrickson, but he doesn't get the bounce. Now, Parker Fredrickson's played over 550 minutes this year. He's got eight turnovers. Wow. It's incredible. Pass deflected and saved. Still Notre Dame ball, lots of time. Burton into Jai. And he might have had a little bit easier shot than he thought he was going to have when he turned and faced the basket. Kari is open on the wing. And the follow goes on the weak side for Fredrickson. Parker Fredrickson, just a, a freshman at 10 points against Duke, at 12 against Virginia Tech. He averaged 30 a game in high school. Roper pushed off a little, creates some space, now gets doubled and gives it up. Booth again. His third three of the game for Notre Dame. Well, he is taking advantage of the openings because Marcus Burton and Shrewsbury are drawing so much attention. And his three-point shooting, keeping Notre Dame in the game right now. Good fakes by Fredrickson. Carr, little bounce pass to oh. Marsh. Marsh right in the dunker spot. And when Carr realized he had Shrewsbury on him to just back him in, that means he's going to have to have help. And Marsh just stepped up from that dunker spot. And aptly named, he dunked that with two hands. And hanging out in the dunker spot, the reason he shoots 70% from the field. Everything is right around the rim. Burton blows by him, but then the size bothered him, and he missed it. they got to make him finish near the rim. Good hesitation by Salas. Miller the drive. Floats and hits. He was looking to draw that contact from Burton and did, but didn't get the call. Had a word for the official. Both Salas and Miller already into double figures in this game. A big difference from the game in South Bend where Salas had only seven points. Wake doing a good job staying in front of Notre Dame drivers, but Roper spins right by his man this time and lays it in. Another thing that Wake Forest is doing pretty well at staying down on fakes. And that helps you stay in front. You're not flying all over the place. Under four to go in the first half. Wake by nine. The stack action into a ball screen. It got deflected by Burton. Good hands. Shrewsbury crosses over and draws the foul. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. Cam Hildreth, I mean, he is unquestionably one of the best players that Wake has. He's played 10 minutes today, has not attempted a shot. Went through a wrist injury midway through the season, kind of knocked his numbers down for several weeks, but he is all the way back. The, the, the tape or the bandage that he had on is gone. He averages better than 13 and a half points per game, and very few in this conference make as many tough shots as Cam Hildreth can make. Yeah, he's working on six straight double-figure games coming into this one. He's got a little bit of a Dante DiVincenzo look yeah. to him, doesn't he? Yeah. He's from Worthing, England. Wake Forest done a great job of recruiting England yes. with he and Marsh. Good excuse to visit London. <laughs> it's a recruiting trip. <laughs> Carr won't go. Booth the rebound. Burton back to Booth. Lost it. And the Irish fortunate to retain it. Well, Salas right there to pick it up, but Roper beat him to it. Defense! 
Shy looking for a guard to give it to finds Burke. And he'll get a foul. Hilder got him. Hildreth was looking at Ron Groover, the official, expecting it to be called on somebody else. And that is number three on Cam Hildreth. But he got him. There's no question. He reached in, got his arm. And I think Ron Groover is now at the monitor just verifying on whom the foul. I mean, does it take your pick? Out of one of them, yeah. But. No, are they switching it? Yeah, they're switching it. And they are giving it to Efton Reed. Very fortunate there. Take your pick. <laughs> A great story. Second on Reed. Coming up tonight at 1130 Eastern Time, the Nothing But Net crew will have a complete breakdown of today's second round ACC tournament games. The Florida State win over Virginia Tech. And again, two more games coming tonight. Syracuse takes on North Carolina State, and then it will be BC and Clemson. Syracuse an interesting team at this. Uh, we've had some moments this year and they're, they're the kind of team that can jump up and steal a couple of games in a, in a tournament. No question. Adrian Autry's done a terrific job this year. Over 20 wins. So Good Jim Bayheim here earlier today. Salas no tipped out by Reed. Hildreth has it. Carr the kick. Hildreth the drive and he lays it in. Boy, really smart play and an excellent pass out. But Hildreth with that shot fake and drive, nobody picked him up. He could have easily shot that, but made the better decision to drive it. First points of the night. Jai lost it. Here comes Miller. Missed it, but look at Carr running the floor. Didn't give up on the play, and Boopy Miller made that. And he reached in with both hands and took it away on that drive. And starkly breakdown as well. One of the great, great days on the sporting calendar. Not to quibble with your method of doing promos, but it's really... You know, Jay, Seth, Reese, Andrea, and the guy. Well, look at right here on my monitor. It says Reese and the guy. You right you, you're not Ron Burgundy. You don't <laughs> just have to read everything in front of you. Well, I have to decide what I'd rather irritate you or Reese. <laughs> Burton. What a fun matchup it is between Boopy Miller and Marcus Burton. I, let's let these two guys go one on one at halftime for a while and see who wins. It's just quick on quick. But there was a little body contact, but I thought Booby Miller did a, a really good job of staying in front here. Unless unless they thought there was arm contact, he stayed in front. Burton missed your basketball in the state of Indiana last year in league games, led the league in steals, fourth overall, sixth in scoring in the league, sixth in assists in the league, and again. Those kinds of numbers, that gets the ACC Rookie of the Year. Only freshman in the country that's averaging over 17 points, over four assists, and over two steals per game. And Notre Dame, it's been a long time since they've had a starter, a, a freshman starter at the point guard position. Also set a, a Notre Dame freshman scoring record, right? Surpassing Troy Murphy. It's going back a ways. What was Chris Thomas the last freshman starter? So. You, you and I go further back. Remember David Rivers? Of I mean, course, I played like against David yeah. Rivers. Hildreth picks up his dribble. He's looking for help and finds Carr. Never damn is solid defensively. Which is kind of the foundation of Micah Shrewsbury's yes. program, right? Uh, Penn State as well. I mean, last year, he got him to the Big Ten Tournament Championship game, got him into the NCAA Tournament, beat Texas, got to the second round. Well, that was a good team. Jalen Pickett, their best player, but he had Seth Lundy and Andrew Funk. Those guys could really spread the floor and shoot it. That was a fun team. 
if I covered up the score and said, how much do you think Wake is winning by? Does it feel more than more than seven, even though it's only seven? Right? I mean, early, but Notre Dame has been playing really well over the last ten minutes. It's much more aggressive on both ends of the floor, especially defensively. Burton puts the brakes on and misses the shot. Follow no, but Jai is fouled. You know, when Marsh came up to put pressure on that shot, and you have to make Marcus Burton, who's small, finish at the rim. But when, when you help up like that, it opens up the offensive glass. And Jai took advantage of it. And you did the game yesterday when Notre Dame beat George Tech. Must have seemed like Jai spent all day at the free throw line. He had 11 points in the game, and he went 9 of 10 from the line. He's Notre Dame's top rebounder, top offensive rebounder. But Tay Davis was fantastic yesterday in that game against Georgia Tech. I mean, it was a complete team effort, and a lot of the credit because of the scoring went to, to Burton and Shrewsbury. But Notre Dame doesn't win that game without Tay Davis and the big plays that he made. You know, so Georgia Tech got knocked out, but they've got interesting freshmen, and Damon Stoudemire starting to to build a culture and a program then, and it feels like Yellow Jackets are uh, going to be a very interesting program to keep an eye on in the years ahead. Yeah, Bayan Dongo had a great game. He's an outstanding freshman, and Nathan George just got better and better throughout the course of the year. Where's he from? Uh, I don't know. I've never heard of the country. <laughs> nothing, nothing's come out of there, really. <laughs> Notre Dame with the ball down only six now in the final minute of the first half. Favorable matchup to drive. Boy, give Carson credit. He's doing everything he can do. Here goes Burton again. And it's turned over. Just lost the handle on it. Burton told Irons, just, hey, man, get out of here. Get your help defender out. Let me take Carr. And he just lost the ball. And Steve hits fun. Blake Hinson's fun. Big game for them tomorrow, no matter who they play. Pitt can really shoot it. I mean, they spread the floor so well and knock in so many threes. They're a little, it's kind of like the guys were talking about it in the studio watching BYU. It was fun to watch. Wake can hold for the last shot. Eight seconds to go. There goes Miller. The pull up. No. Carr got it back. And that'll be that in the first half as Wake got out to a lead of as many as 14 points in the opening minutes. But Notre Dame stuck with it, and they are back within six. Both Salas. But he said they can take great shots. Just thank you. Uh, what a nice win this would be for Notre Dame. They got a good one over Georgia Tech. The winner advances into the quarterfinals to play Pitt tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern here on ESPN. Andrew Carr had a nice first half. Had nine rebounds and eight points. Three blocks as well. And he's into double figures now as he slams it home. Efton Reed with the assist. Efton Reed knew he was going to get double team. And that was all set up. You had Carr in the opposite corner, and he just made a cut right to the basket and made himself available. How about four assists now for Efton Reed the third? Well, he knows he's going to get doubled. And remember the first half, he didn't handle a double team, wound up turning it over, and Notre Dame took it the other way. That was exactly how you want to handle a double. Braden Shrewsbury gets doubled. Burton with about a 26 footer comes up a little short, but Booth hustling all over the place to run it down Burton good defense there by Reed. That's your textbook principle of verticality right there Yeah, the vertical contest and making Burton finish over the top. He couldn't do it He was just trying to body seek Salas around and out and it's Notre Dame ball now Take a look at the left corner that's where Carr is, and as soon as the ball goes in, you got a, a double team, and then that means Tay Davis has to crack down from the top. He didn't get there in time, really well handled by Efton Reed. Good throwback. Davis driving on Carr, and Carr called for the foul. And looked like the arms came down just enough. It wasn't just the arms in my view He, he kind of threw his chest into him. And so that wasn't offense initiated contact 
Now watch his chest here. He just throws it right back into him. See, well, he knocked him back a little bit, but you're right. He, his arms definitely were a little bit down. But there, there he threw his chest into him there at the very end. So Steve Forbes, perhaps with a decision to made, and he's made it clearly because that's three on Carr. And at least at the moment, well, we spoke too soon. Here comes Zach Keller. Why'd you say we? I didn't say anything. <laughs> Don't drag me into your speaking too soon thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Carr is out. And this will be interesting to see how long Steve Forbes keeps him on the bench. You talked about a great first half that he had. He is a player of vital importance to the Deeps, especially on the glass. Salas into Reed. No double yet. Here it comes. And he'll score anyways. It looked like they were trying to bring the double after he put it on the deck, but he just turned away from the double team. Kerry Booth brought it from the high side. And Reed just turned to the baseline over that left shoulder. He's handled two double teams really, really well. But those were different doubles than we saw in the first half. They were more aggressive. Hildreth trying to defend Burton. Jai back to Burton. Five to shoot. Puts it up off the side of the backboard, and it belongs to Wake. Really good defense by Hildreth. Just making everything difficult for Marcus Burton. He can score off difficult, too, but they don't want to give him anything easy. Well, how about Salas just turned around, kept that pivot foot down, and took the three, but he couldn't hit it. Well, I'm not sure that was the shot that Wake Forest wanted there, which is or sort of as an afterthought. Shrewsbury gets out of trouble. And a foul committed by Keller to send Tay Davis to the line. But Wake Forest had him pinned in. And then they just allowed Shrewsbury to split that trap. Good job to turn away from the double team over that left shoulder. Thought he might go off the glass, but really well handled by Efton Reed. You know, you look at the, the size that Notre Dame has on the front line. Davis is 6'9". Booth is kind of a long, lanky 6'10", and then Jai is 6'10", as well. Michael Shrewsbury's got some size up front. Yep, they look kind of small going up against against Reed. <laughs> He's seven feet. And Reed that doesn't look like he's been walking past the weight room. He looks like he's yes. been going in. A starter at LSU two years ago, a zag last year as a reserve, and now back as a starter at Wake, his third school in as many years. And if they give him credit for another assist, that'll be his fifth as Boopy Miller knocks it down. That was a horn set. They got it to Reed, and he just pivoted and wound up essentially setting a screen with the ball to allow Boopy Miller to come off it. Boy, Burton constantly moving. Davis scoops it up. No, but another foul on Keller. Really good job to pivot around. Now take a look. Take a look at Efton Reed on the right block. This tracker isn't working. So on the right block, he's going to catch the ball, and then he pivots, and then he picks off Marcus Burton just by pivoting. So he wound up being having the ball and being a screener at the same time, and that freed up Boopy Miller to get around. You know, on the surface, you can say Efton Reed, oh, he's got four points and three rebounds, but he's had a much, much bigger impact on the game than that. Five assists, as we mentioned, and, you know, protecting the lane. He's done a lot of really good things for Wake. Yeah, what you call him is a presence. When he's been on the floor, he's been a presence at both ends. Miller with the rebound. Smart play. Yeah, right? Miller. Yep. Smart play. Just had Jai sort of in jail on his backside and put on the brakes and let him roll right over him. Number two on Jai. And the referees will let that initial guy, that, they're not calling that. But when you knock the guy down, you know, they got to call that. Six point lead at the half, seven point lead now for Wake. Salas had a huge start to this game, fairly quiet since then. 
Reed banging with Jai, and then, oh, it won't go down. Everything but the finish as he spun to the left hand. Boy, that was a good cut by Keller to open up that space. Grafton Reed just didn't finish it. Shrewsbury gets it back, finds Burton. Wake Forest switch that. Good pass. Booth. No good, and another rebound for Reed. Boy, they could have called a foul there. Reed was not straight up and down there. Keller got two in the air and will be heading to the free throw line. Just an open side pick and roll. There's nobody there to come from the corner to tag and pick up that roll. Wake by seven, second half here in Washington. Mail carrier brings dog treats. Really? When the mail's delivered. That's pretty cool. Always? Like yeah. every day? And they're delicious. I don't even give it to my dog. Do you know his name? Not your dog. The dog? No, yeah. not, not the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the dog. I don't know my neighbor's name. <laughs> Zach Keller at the line. In the first half, airballed the first, made the second. Before today, the last time he had been at the free throw line in a game was November. Oh, thought he missed it, but it went in. He probably shot free throws in practice. Yes, though. I mean, yeah, last time the game was November. Yes. Yeah. That's about the, he's had two of the most interesting split a pair of free throws as you can have. I'm really trying to run Braden Shrewsbury off a lot of screens. What a rebound. Great rebound by Kevin John, and he throws it out of bounds off of Reed. Kevin Jai is a really good offensive rebounder. He averages two a game. That was a big time rebound. The handoff to Burton. And they are giving a lot of attention, as and rightfully so, to Marcus Burton. And again, he had 31 against Wake a couple of weeks ago in an Notre Dame win. Good defense. And then Jai throws it out of bounds off Afton Reed's head. Reed was like, hey, the first one was a little yeah. lower. That, yeah. yeah. This is getting out of hand. He's like shaking his head saying, okay, yeah. we're done. This is getting out of yeah. hand. We're done here. <laughs> Shot clock under four. Oh, great play by Hilbert. He just read the eyes of Shrewsbury. I think knew the ball was coming to him and lays it in. Have yourself a trip down the court, Cam Hilbert. Boy, he read it, but he had his, that was like a defensive back. He had both arms up. Because he couldn't even see it. And then takes it the other way. And this, he really looks like Dante DiVincenzo. Finishing at the rim. Just a really smart play. Just to have, That's why coaches always say, have high hands, high hands. The ball just hit his hands because he put his hands in the way. Bounces it in for a three-point play. The lead up to 11. The foul on Braden Shrewsbury, his third. A scene for Tay Davis. Reed gets over to slow him down. And Keller just helping off because he's not worried about Jai hitting that shot when the throwback is made. Burden for three. And that's Wake basketball. Efton Reed was glad it went out of bounds so it didn't get thrown <laughs> off his noggin again. I wouldn't want to annoy Efton Reed by continually throwing the ball off of him. So you just annoy me? Yeah. <laughs> Keller getting minutes with Carr on the bench with three fouls. Hildreth, he loves to post. The double comes and he kicks it cross court to Miller. Spins and gets it to go. And what a nice play because Marcus Burton was right there to try to take the ball away. If he had changed hands in spinning there, I think Burton might have been able to knock that away. Good play by Boopy Miller. And a bigger margin now for the Deeks, up by 13. So much fun to say Boopy. <laughs> Good pass. Davis up and in. Good body control in midair by Jay Davis. Just a sophomore transferred in from Seton Hall. And he's had some really good moments in the two games that Notre Dame's played here in Washington, D.C. Oh, 
Salas baseline. Good Play. defense. Well done by Julian Roper. And Reed turns it over. Shrewsbury a transition three. And Micah Shrewsbury is saying you had a man run into the corner. Hit him for the corner three. I'm about to tell your mom that was a bad decision. <laughs> Coach's kids had a pretty good freshman year, and he has gotten better and better over the course of the season. Now, he's a really good player. You think about the future of this backcourt at Notre Dame with Burton and Shrewsbury. It is a bright one. And yet, Kerry Booth in there has had a terrific first half of taking advantage of the openings that were provided by all the attention on Burton and Shrewsbury. Filled with no Irish ball. But Wake Forest really had a chance to stretch this lead out. How did he get through there? Burton just kept driving and found himself at the rim. Back down to single digits. Are back in the game with that foul trouble. Hildreth no. And Carr keeps it alive and lays it in. That's exactly what he was doing the whole first half. And Esme had the ball and Carr just took it away from him. Carr now with 12 points and 10 rebounds. Make it 11. And good pursuit by Hildreth. That ball was going up quickly, but he put late pressure on it. Had to affect the shot a little bit at least. And a foul on Jai, trying to defend Carr down in the paint. Wake Forest. In a monumentally important game for them, buying four for 19, two of 11 from three. And you hold those scorers down, they combined for what, 44 points yesterday? They combined for 16. But they've taken 19 shots to get those 16 points. And a few of them have been free throws. Notre Dame shooting just 31% from the floor, Wake just under 50. Notre Dame, though, six threes to Wake's three and four more points at the line. A couple of the reasons why they're still within striking distance here, down 11. Booth hit three threes in the first half. Not there. And over half of Notre Dame's shots have been threes. And Wake Forest is dominating the paint. Second chance points and points off turnovers all in favor of the Deacons. And Notre Dame not really a big three-point shooting team, just 32% as a team of the season. Hildreth is working hard. Ball's not falling for him right now. Burton, the spin and the kick. Knocked away by Fredrickson. And he lays it into the other end. Oh, what a play by the freshman from Bixby, Oklahoma. Let the defense just fly by. Oh, he's a smart player. That turnover thing. Eight turnovers in 550 plus minutes on the season. That's, that's remarkable. Shrewsbury has it swatted out of bounds by Salas. Just active hands by Friedrichsen taking it the other way. And then you can see just tucked the ball away to his right as Braden Shrewsbury flew by. And Esme into the game, launches the three, a little bit short, Marsh the rebound. Good block out by Marsh on Tay Davis. That's another big body is your backup center, 7-1-240. Two seven-footers on this Wake roster. And Carr's not far behind. Screen, re-screen, then into a ball screen. Tried the alley-oop and a foul on the Irish. That was Marcus Burton just trying to... Throw his body in there. A little bit of an undercut situation. Number four on Marcus Burton. And he had some foul trouble yesterday toward the end of the game. And Micah Shrewsbury had to make some offense defense substitutions. And right now, nobody going to the scorer's table. He is indispensable for them. Hildred. The corner three. Good pass by Carr as the defense was contracted, just looked out to the perimeter. And Hildreth has been much better offensively in the second half. His defense still been good. All eight points that he's got today have come here in the second half. Hunter Salas now called for a foul.
This little screen roll caught him on the short roll. And then as Booth comes up, he's surrounded by three. That means somebody's open. And he found Hildreth in the corner. In the game yesterday against Georgia Tech, after Burton picked up his fourth foul, Nathan George, they were just targeting Marcus Burton. And that, that's really what Wake Forest needs to do, just go after him. Dribbling out beyond the arc for the Irish. Shot clock is running out. And a foul was called before the shot clock expired. Will they look at it? I think they're going to go to the monitor and say what happened first, the foul call or the shot clock violation. Well, the contact occurred yeah, before it went to 0-0. Zero, zero. If it's right, it's Marsh. There. Yeah, I don't know whether they called they called on Marsh or Carr, because Carr brought his arms down. Yeah. So there's no question that should be a foul. Yeah. And it looked like it was 0 0.1. Yep, 0 0.2. And it is the foul that will stand and a couple of free throws coming for Burton. And the foul was called on Marsh, not Carr. Marsh was the one more straight up and down. At the line for number three, Marcus Burton, shooting two. Burton, a good free throw shooter, 81% on the season. Ooh, the free throw line in the second half is the only place Notre Dame's really scoring. Takes the ball out of Salas's hands. Misses the left-handed layup. Imes down with a rebound. Carr guarding him out on the perimeter. And into the hands of Burton. He initiates everything offensively for this team. Whether it's looking for himself or somebody else, that time it's himself. And it's down to 12. He's so quick with the ball. He's got another gear. Carr. Fredrickson. Short. And it'll be Notre Dame ball. As Steve Forbes is going to bring Efton Reed the third and Boopy Miller back into the game. Notre Dame has made only three field goals in the second half. Seven points coming at the line and they're still in it. Tipped away and a foul. That's the second good defensive play made by Fredrickson. And give credit to Poopy Miller because he really did a great job denying the ball back out to Marcus Burton. And that meant you had to throw more of a diagonal pass, and Fredrickson read it really well. But watch, watch Poopy Miller. He denied it back out, so Booth had to try to get it to Himes. And Fredrickson just shot the gap. Double on Reed. Car cuts. Good pass. Miller for three. And Notre Dame ball. Boy, they did everything right there, though. Yeah, you didn't get the shot to go down. A really good decision by Carr. 
Tough catch by Jai. And a foul on Carr. I don't know why he did that. He stopped the initial action that just threw his right arm out. And shot him back. And it's number four on him. Wait by a dozen. I mean, it's a championship program. And I don't think there's any tougher player in the country than Jamal Shedd. And he may be the best on-ball defender in the country, and he's right up there to be the best leader in the country. Purdue, UConn, Houston locks for a one seed. Does it come down to Tennessee and Carolina for the last one in your mind? Yeah, Arizona's still in there if they win the Pac-12 tournament. It's possible. Their numbers are really, and they're really good. But if Carolina runs the table here in Washington, D.C., they're going to make a great, great case. Carolina will play Florida State. We'll have it for you noon Eastern tomorrow here on ESPN. Hildreth lost it. Good defense there by Jai to swat it away. Burton. Hildreth kept it alive, and Boopy Miller's got it for weight. And he tried to bait Jai into another foul. Or was it Davis last time? I can't remember, but he uh, he tried that same play again. Yeah, it was Jai that yeah. did the last time. What a screen by Keller. And Fredrickson wide open. 41% from beyond the arc on the season. You tend to get wide open when a teammate just lays out your defender. And that's exactly what Zach Keller did there. Shrewsbury now to Burton. 10 to shoot. Wake Forest has done a great job on Burton. Keller a little too aggressive with his body picking up the foul. He'd already sent him to the sideline. That's good enough. Let's check in with Jess. In the last week huddle, Coach Forbes said, make some stops, man. It's time. So when Notre Dame shoots, it's got to be one and done. No offensive boards. He brought up the fact that they do have nine so far. He said, let's put them away. 624 away from putting them away. Up 15. Pitt awaits the winner tomorrow. And defensively, I think Steve Forbes has to be pretty happy with the way his team has competed. This is a Notre Dame team that put up 84 points yesterday. Jason Capel, brother and assistant coach to Jeff Capel at Pitt. And they've been able to get over that whole Duke Carolina thing. You know, Jeff went to Duke and Jason went to start yeah. at North Carolina. Hit the four seed. So one of the four schools that earned a double bye. Carolina the one, Duke the two, Virginia the three, and then Pitt. Salas. Where they want to make him give it up. And he does so. Reed catches it and then missed the dunk. A good saving block there by Keller. Well, you can't have an easier shot than Efton Reed just had. Marcus Burden having to guard him then recover out to the three point line. Left him all alone. Keller getting some minutes because Carr's had some foul trouble. And he's played well off the bench. Carr's had a great game despite his minutes being limited a bit. But Wake's really done a good job on Burton and Shrewsbury. Davis punched off the rim. And now, yeah, now a goaltender will be called. They're going to look at it or are they just going to count it? They're going to count it and they can look at it at the next timeout. That's the rule until you get into the last four. So that is called basket interference in a basket, and they will look at it at the next timeout. Just coming off. That might have still been up there. Yeah, it looks like it still was in the cylinder. It might have been tight. I think it was more out than in, but any part of it still touching the rim. You have to leave it alone. 11 point lead for Wake. Hunter Salas, a dozen in the game, hasn't scored in the second half. Well, three rattles out for Keller. Notre Dame trying to get it under 10. Not 
yards away. Boy, Fredrickson's really been in the passing lanes, hasn't he? Salas at the other end. Another great play by Parker Fredrickson. He and Poopy Miller communicated very well on that switching action. A couple of different runouts for Wake Forest, turning defense into offense. Only 10 Notre Dame turnovers. That doesn't sound like a lot. But Wake Forest has turned that into 15 points, and you combine that with what they've done in the paint. They've dominated the paint in this game, 32-12 to 12 in paint points. Under five minutes to go, 13-point lead for the Demon Deacons. And Notre Dame generally not an explosive offensive team, only averaging 64 a game. And you got to believe they got to get some quick scores and knock down some threes if they're going to have a chance to get back into this. Another good job by Cam Hildreth of putting pressure on Shrewsbury when he's trying to get a shot up. They've really limited the freshman guards for Notre Dame in this game. Nice look. Five to shoot. Wake using some clock on this possession. Miller the miss. And a whistle and a foul going against the Irish. Just a push in the back of Zach Keller as he was about to get out that offensive rebound. Seventh team foul, so Keller going to the line. There's the push by Shrewsbury. Number four on him. Missed the front end. Carr has come back to the table to check back in for Wake. Burton, he's fouled. Boy, can anybody stop on a dime quicker than Marcus Burton? Or if they can, it's a short list. Wake Forest Number three on Reed. You got Mishawaka, you got Mississauga. You're well done. <laughs> Keller out, car in. Boy, Burton has to work so hard, too. He has to do so many different things for this Notre Dame team. He never seems to get tired. I know we said that in the first game about Virginia Tech, Sean Padula. And I wonder how many miles Marcus Burton runs in a game. It's significant. Or kilometers. Thank you. Bring you into the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and Knezny, I think they'll get him for the foul, trying to defend the drive from Salas. Timeout on the floor. Wake Forest up by 11. ESPN's exclusive present, 2.30 Eastern Time here on ESPN. Don't forget, two night games coming up tonight. Dave O'Brien, Corey Alexander, and Angel Gray will have Syracuse and NC State, and also Clemson and Boston College. Hunter Salas at the line for the Deeks. Wake has left some points on the line here in the second half. Still up 11, though. Yeah, it's a team that yeah. leads the ACC in free throw shooting at 80%. One of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. They missed them both. It's an 80% shooter, too. He's now four for seven from the line in this one. Nesny in the game with the Irish. Somehow got it by Carr, couldn't score it, got it back and kicked it out. Shrewsbury slips. Well, Notre Dame having to work hard to try to get a shot off here. Davis somehow got that ball away from Carr and scored it. And the Wake fans were hoping for a whistle there. And Notre Dame just stuck to it, but uh, Wake Forest credit. They kept running. Notre Dame off that three-point line made him into a two-point shooting team and Wake can be a little bit more deliberate now with a nine-point lead under three to go Salas open in the corner air ball on the three Reed with a putback 
uh, missing everything might have helped Efton Reed a little bit. Notre Dame's trying to block him out. He could follow the flight of the ball. Move to Davis, driving on Reed, who fouls him. Number four on Efton Reed. He becomes the third Wake player with four fouls. Efton Reed just caught that air ball and then has a little rip through to get to his right hand, finishes the play. Doesn't it feel like more than six points and five rebounds for Efton Reed today? It does, and especially because of the assist. When he's seen double teams coming, with the exception of that one in the first half where he threw it away, but the double came really quickly and think he reacted too quickly. He showed really good poise in the post and made the right decision more often than not. Davis makes them both to get it back down to nine, but under two and a half to go. With full court pressure, zone pressure. Well, with Miller and Salas, not to mention Hildreth, you've got some some good ball handlers out there right now for Lake. Some good free throw shooters. Double on Reed oh, again. That was a dangerous pass. Shrewsbury could have taken that the other way. Miller fouled by Davis, so he'll be going to the line. Another over 80% free throw shooter. Boopy Miller's 83%. Seventh in the league. A lot of pacing for Steve Forbes. Again, the last couple of weeks, other than the win over Clemson on Saturday, they lost three in a row, including one to Notre Dame before beating Clemson, and have put themselves in a much more precarious position about doing what they need to do so far here in this one. And Steve Forbes isn't even in the top 50 of pacers on the sidelines. No. You know the the all-time pacer was to me, Tom Crean. He's, He's in the, the studio. Right now. That's right. He looks so good. Hasn't, hasn't gained any weight in 20 years. <laughs> he got his steps in on the steps into the practice. <laughs> yeah. Booth hit three early threes, but has not been able to add to that. Really helped keep minute at the beginning with those three threes. Minute 45 to go now. But good luck trapping Booty Mill. <laughs> Salas splits the double, missed it. Rebound Reed, he'll kick it back out. Hildreth up and under. Or if you prefer a reverse. Yeah, that's not that's happening. That's a reverse, I know. Up and under is a term of art. <laughs> Kevin McHale used to use yes. the up and under move. It's a lot different. But I'll let you get away with it. Burton is fouled on the drive. And that's the last thing Wake Forest wants to do. Is foul and stop the clock. Salas the foul, his second. Burton back to the line. It's a terrific job of using the rim so that Booth can't block it. And so many people call that an up and under. You just did. I mean, it's not a big deal, but <laughs> an up and under is a specific move, usually in a post move where you fake a turnaround jumper and then step through. <laughs> you make me laugh. It drives me crazy. Really, when the sports I, center guys I couldn't do tell. That. Yeah, <laughs> up and under. That's not an up and under move. If you really want to get him going, folks, <laughs> say that somebody left their feet. Oh, that's that's an old Steve yeah. Yoder thing. <laughs> what really gets me mad is dressing on the side. Yeah. I want my dressing on the salad. <laughs> I don't ask for half and half on the side. Under a minute to go and Wake on its way into the quarterfinals and you can make a case Who knows for sure, but you can make a case Jay That it could be construed or considered an elimination game tomorrow between Wake and Pitt Somebody's gonna lose one of those bubble teams is going to lose I think both teams are gonna come out playing like it's Saturday night in the ACC championship game. and they should I'm not sure it is an elimination game, but you always want it's certainly an elimination game for the ACC championship. Won't go down for Booth. The rebound for Hildreth. The shot clock turned off. 
a game effort by a young Notre Dame team that's going to get better and better in the future. For Wake, they did what they had to do, and that is win this game. They got pushed, but they responded. Uh, they built on their lead in the second half, and boy, oh boy, it's going to be fun when the Deeks and the Panthers meet in the quarterfinals tomorrow afternoon. Time now for our play for the game brought to you by Jimmy Dean, and how about all...